Jim Chalmers, thanks so much for your time. As always, earlier in the program, Andrew Clennell reported this news that New South Wales, that the government's going to implement a job saver program for those businesses that have 40, 50 per cent drops in their turnover. The federal government's been asked to chip in 50 50. They haven't said yes at this point, no indication that they will. What do you think? Should they? Well, Scott Morrison and Josh Frydenberg seem to be the only people in Australia who don't understand that a lot of small businesses are still struggling. They're in such a rush to pat themselves on the back for the recovery that they're not doing enough to actually secure that recovery and taking responsibility for what needs to happen here. And we've said all along, let's be constructive uh, about support payments for small business and for workers. Uh, we shouldn't pretend this pandemic is over. It's been prolonged by the mistakes that Frydenberg and Morrison have made in mismanaging this pandemic and so the least they can do is engage in a proper conversation uh, with the government of New South Wales and with other state governments to see what if anything else could be done here. So you'd be open to, to backing such an idea this 50-50 arrangement being put forward apparently by the New South Wales government to the feds? Well, clearly the scale of the federal government's stuff up here has been so big and the consequences for a lot of small businesses and workers so dire, the least they can do is be part of the conversation. You know, what we've seen throughout this pandemic now for two years is a federal government which won't take responsibility uh, for the damage that they've done, the, the consequences of the mistakes that they've made in mismanaging this pandemic, their failure to understand uh, that you can't have a healthy economy or a healthy recovery without healthy people. So they should be part of the discussion with the New South Wales government. New South Wales government, for all its faults, understands that small businesses are doing it tough, as we do. Now, this government, unfortunately, whether it's Josh Frydenberg or Barnaby Joyce, they seem to live in this parallel universe where people aren't dying from COVID, uh, where rats are so uh, prevalent that you can uh, hoard them. Uh, and where small businesses aren't doing it tough. That's obviously wrong on each of those counts. We want the government to take responsibility for the recovery, not just take credit for forecasting one. The Deputy PM, you touched on that, says that people have been hoarding tests, urging people not to, to do that. Why, why shouldn't he make that point if it is accurate? Because the rapid tests aren't available in sufficient numbers for people to hoard them. I mean, this government is stupendously out of touch. If they think that there are so many rapid antigen tests that people are somehow stockpiling them in the basement, it's just completely ridiculous. It's just as ridiculous as his comment that people aren't dying from COVID-19. And it's just as ridiculous, frankly, as Josh Frydenberg's popping in for a selfie into Queensland today uh, to tell everyone what a good job he's done at the same time as people in some instances can't find fresh food and groceries, they can't find rapid antigen tests, uh, they can't work safely without those tests. Now, what we've seen time and time again, Kieran, whether it's Barnaby Joyce or Josh Frydenberg, joined at the hip on these issues. They're in such a rush to say that everything is fine that they are completely blind to the fact that a lot of people and a lot of families, a lot of small businesses are still doing it incredibly tough but they are so out of touch with what's happening in real communities and in the real economy right around Australia that they want to wander around Queensland patting themselves on, on the back mm. for a recovery which hasn't played out yet because the government under Morrison and Frydenberg and Joyce haven't actually done their job and taken responsibility for providing those tests. I've been to chemists Isn't in this neighbourhood, Kieran, uh, throughout the course of today, and what they're telling me is... They've got a lot of concession card holders who are showing up, as they were told to by the Prime Minister and the Treasurer, to collect these free rapid antigen tests, but they don't have any. You know, this goes to the very core of a government which makes big announcements but doesn't follow through, and ordinary Australians well, they're, are they're the saying, price. They're saying 16 million tests are arriving next week, but in, in terms of the broader performance in Queensland, the government, the Treasurer, argues there are 350,000 more people employed in Queensland today than there was when Labor left office. Is that not an achievement for him to prosecute? I think he is even more out of touch than we feared. If he wants to pop into Queensland on a selfie tour, which should be an apology tour, and pretend that everything is fine with the economy. Of course, there are more Queenslanders employed than there were eight years ago. There are more Queenslanders. You know, of course, as the economy recovers, from the latest, you know, extraordinary stuff up from the Morrison government, of course, uh, there is going to be more jobs in the recovery than there were in the deepest parts of the recession. Now, we want the unemployment number to be as low as possible, 
but unemployment would be better, the economy would be better, the recovery would be stronger if Scott Morrison and Josh Frydenberg didn't make mistake after mistake after mistake. They've been saying for two years that the economy is about to come good, but at each instance, whether it's the COVID safe app or vaccines or quarantine or boosters or rapid tests or back to school, whatever it is, uh, the government always gets in the way of the recovery with the mistakes that they've made. They should take responsibility for those mistakes and not just take credit for saying that there'll be a recovery down the track. You, you've backed Mark McGowan's decision to delay the reopening. Do you think Queensland should have done the same? I think the issues uh, in whether it's Queensland or right up and down the east coast of Australia, you know, clearly uh, the, the, the issues which have played out have been federal government responsibilities. You know, if we had the rapid antigen tests like the government said that we would have, if they'd sorted the boosters like they were supposed to, if they'd heeded the warnings that people have been making since September, October last year about some of these things, uh, then it would be a far safer reopening. You know, we have not tried to second guess uh, state governments of either political persuasion when, they, when they've made difficult decisions based on the health advice. All we've asked, and a lot of Australians are asking for the same thing, is for the federal government to do their job. Prime Minister's gone missing. You know, Frydenberg's wandering around taking selfies with tennis rackets at the same time as small businesses are struggling. Chemists are out of rapid antigen tests. Our supermarkets are out of groceries. The Treasurer says that the economic fundamentals are strong. I would have thought it's pretty fundamental to be able to feed your family and to return to work safely, and that's where this government's fallen short. When you look at the tax cuts uh, that the government's delivered, they say that 2 million Queenslanders have received on average 3270 in tax relief since the program was implemented. I ask you this in the context of the last election. Has Labor reinvented itself to support the lower taxes and make that argument ahead of the next election, given how damaging it was for Labor at the last? Well, as you know, Kieran, we voted for those tax cuts. You know, we said all along that the priority for tax cuts should be people on low and middle incomes. These are the tax cuts that the Treasurer is now giving himself a big pat on the back for. And what he hasn't told people, whether it's in Queensland or right around Australia, is a big chunk of those uh, tax cuts that he was talking about today are slated to end a couple of weeks after this year's election. And so he's getting in now before the election to brag about these tax cuts and not fessing up to Queenslanders and Australians more broadly that a big chunk of those tax cuts end on the, first, on the 30th of June, a few weeks after uh, the next election. So he should be honest about it and he should be honest about the fact that this government is the second highest taxing government of the last 30 years. The highest was John Howard's. Uh, this government is collecting an extra $150 billion is that not more people are uh, than Labor did in its last year of office. Well, there, there are more Australians, Kieran, but even per capita, uh, even uh, adjusting for inflation, this government is a higher taxing government than its Labor predecessor. And I don't think people are fooled by Josh Frydenberg on his selfie tour of Queensland, popping in for a selfie to tell everyone how good he thinks he's doing. I think people see him as the guy that stuffed up JobKeeper, gave tens of billions of dollars to businesses that didn't need it. Yeah. Uh, the guy that uh, signed off on all this rorts and waste and mismanagement, which people are going to have to pay for at some point. Uh, so I think people are pretty sick of him taking credit for these tax cuts. He know that they were supported in a bipartisan way in the parliament. He know people mm. know that this government is a higher taxing government than its Labor predecessor. And so they take his latest spin and marketing with a grain of salt. Finally, uh, almost out of time, but Scott Morrison's account on WeChat has uh, been hijacked. James Patterson called for parliamentarians to boycott it. Uh, Simon Birmingham now calling on Australian users of WeChat to reconsider using that platform. He did so earlier on the program. What's your view? Oh, look, we've said privately and publicly, Kieran, that we would like the government to brief us on these developments. You know, we don't take foreign interference lightly. It's a serious issue. It requires us uh, to take it seriously, and that includes uh, trying to approach it in a bipartisan fashion. If there's issues here, let's hear about them from the government. Let's get a proper briefing. Let's work together uh, to see what the best steps are. I don't think sending out a backbencher to make these kind of calls is necessarily the best way to resolve it. Let's have a chat about it with the government, see what we can come, see what kind of agreement we can come to together to try and resolve it so that we're taking foreign interference seriously and so that we are being uh, as safe and appropriate as we can online. Joining me live from Logan in Brisbane, Jim Chalmers, thanks. Thanks, Kieran.